All right, what I want to do is show you um, how to determine when you, um, your value of x when f of x equals g of x. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the value of x when these two functions are equal to each other. So what they said in the problem is we want to determine what happens when we have f of x equals g of x. So before we've looked at when when we find the value of x when f of x equals zero. So what we did was we put a zero in for the f of x and then solve for x. Well now we're given this um, constraint where well, we want f of x to equal g of x. So we know f of x is the square root of 3x plus 1 and g of x is x plus 1. So if we want them to equal each other, we're just going to write square root of 3x plus 1 equals x plus 1. So that's pretty much all we're doing. We say f of x equals g of x. We know what f of x and g of x are. That's given to us. So we set them equal to each other. Now the fun part is we have to go and learn, do our algebra to solve for x. So um, the first thing we need to do is we need to learn how to get these x's onto the same side. Or, <clears throat> um, or at least we need to find a way to combine them. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to subtract the 1. I notice these both have positive 1. So if I subtract the 1 on both sides, if I subtract 1 over here, that's going to cancel out. So therefore, I'm cancel out. So I'm left with a 3x equals x, or the square root, I'm sorry, 3x equals x. So again, before I go ahead and get this x over to the same side though, I'm going to want to get rid of the square root. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. To get rid of the square root, I can square both sides. And so that's going to go ahead and cancel out. So therefore I'm left with 3x equals x squared. Now, I'm going to want to get these over to the same side, and then remember, whenever we're dealing uh, with the power variable 1, we want to start looking into if we can get our x's as a set of linear factors. Because once we can get it to linear factors, we'll be able to factor it and solve for it. So I'm going to subtract 3x, and actually just continue uh, the problem up here. So I have 0 equals x squared minus 3x. So now what I can do is I can look at this and I say, all right, well, I still don't know what x is, right? I need some way to go and factor, uh, factor this out. So I notice that they both share an x. So what I'm going to do is factor out back an x. So therefore, I have 0 equals factor out x. And we have x minus 3. And the important thing, what happened, the reason why you always want to look to this is because now I have a set of linear factors where x times x minus 3, either one of these can make that equal to zero. So your two possible two possible answers for x could be, you could either say x could equal zero, or you could say if x was equal to three, or actually let me, let me show you why x equals three, or you could say zero equals x minus three. So then when I add a three onto both sides, I get my two solutions is are x equals zero and x equals three. And pretty much what we're showing you is, you know, if you plugged in a 3 in there, 3 minus 3 would be 0. 0 times, you know, 3 would be 0 again. Or if you plugged in a 0 in for x, 0 times um, negative 3 would be 0 again. So therefore, your two solutions, when f of x equals g of x, is 0 and 3. Make sense?